This is day six of reading Revelation. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind could blow on land or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea, Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. 12,000 were marked from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, and 12,000 were marked from the tribe of Benjamin. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where do they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst any more, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. With the ominous vision of the seals behind us, we get a little break today here where the angels who are in charge of preventing the natural destruction of the universe are told to stay at their posts and not allow anything bad to happen yet. Because in the meantime, those who have been saved, those who are marked as the people who are are chosen by God, receive that mark. Here they're, they're marked on their foreheads with the name of God. And this is often overlooked. Certainly in our modern culture, we know all about the, the, the mark of the beast, the mark of Satan. It's been described as everything from social security numbers to driver's licenses to bank account numbers, anything you can think of. We know all about that. That gets a lot of press coverage from those who want to take the most extreme interpretation of Revelation. But this one is less known, I think, that in fact a large number of people are are marked. And as Christians, we probably should hear in this something that sounds to us like baptism, where we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever, first with water and then with the oil of chrism. So in that sense, Every one of us who has been baptized can be thought of as having been marked with the seal of God already on our foreheads. That's helpful when we come to the rest of that first paragraph today where it sounds like specific numbers from specific tribes of Israel are being described. 144,000, again, a number that is tossed around a lot by those who want to interpret this in a particular way. It certainly is a big number but I don't think we should get too hung up on it because it's followed by the description of a great multitude of which there is no count. The idea that God would ever be limited by any 
precise number. Well, your number 144,001, so you're not in, seems absurd. The power of God can have no such limitation. And so the idea that these numbers are out there simply to suggest to us the, the, the enormous nature of what it is God has undertaken in saving humanity, in perfecting the universe, should not be lost uh, as we hear about what may sound like troubling events that happen uh, in the process of doing that. So there's a vision here of the church in all times, and this includes ours, those who are saved and who are described as standing before the throne of God, worshiping day and night. This is in many ways what the church is called to do, in fact, what the church does do. There's a hymn that we sing at evening prayer that talks about how the voice of prayer is never silent because the, the church of God has run right around the world. And so as the sun is setting in one place, it's rising in another. The, the worship of God is always taking place somewhere. There is never a time when no one is praying. Also, there's this image that, that somehow all of this will end with comfort and with joy. I think it's helpful that when we have something that makes us worry a little, the chapter nonetheless ends with this poem, song, story that describes what it's like for those who have been brought before the throne of God, that God will wipe every tear from their eyes. They will have no pain and no sorrow, that even as these tribulations continue, to be in the presence of God is to be comforted and that ultimate comfort comes only from perfect union with God when in fact we do at some point, whether it's a point in time or a point outside of time given that God is timeless, uh, when we do in fact come to stand before the throne of God. One other point to see here is that there's the promise that they will be nourished with the water of life. Water is certainly a vital need. So the idea that everything that we need, everything that sustains us will be provided by God should be comforting to us as well. <laughs> Well, yeah.